Bangalore. It's a market with big names, swank homes and solid real estate. Over the last couple of decades, this city has led South India's job market to become a major IT destination. And that's had a direct drop-off effect on the city's realty audience. Young buyers with big wallets. And if global realty consultant Jones Lang LaSalle is to be believed, this could well mean good days for the city's luxury segment. People who are young, employable, looking at life, settling in life. So when we see other cities, where we see the age profile of the cities in other cities, it's not too much skewed towards 30, it's more skewed towards 40. But when we see in Bangalore specifically, it's more skewed towards 25 to 35 people coming and buying apartments and that to going and affording an apartment which is a more than 1.5 crore, 2 crore ticket size. According to a report released by JLL, this demographic development is the highlight of this market's move towards better luxury. It details how the average age of the Bangalorean has dropped from 60 plus to a little over 30 in just two decades. This while their salaries have gone the other way. This audience, the report says, works in some of Bangalore's 212 IT firms, the largest in any Indian city. The presence of big addresses like Vital Malia Road, Cunningham Road and Richmond Town has also added to the growth of luxury in the city. But realty players believe that the presence of a booming villa market has the Bangalore buyer spoiled for choice while zeroing in on prime real estate. As you move towards the secondary and peripheral areas where land costs are a bit more reasonable, there the villa concepts are becoming popular wherever the land cost is affordable to absorb or to make it into a luxury, uh, you know, villa project. The JLL report too details how Whitefield has become Bangalore's ideal villa market, with projects here staying below 10,000 rupees per square foot. But the key to Bangalore becoming India's ideal luxury market lies in its own brand of affordable luxury. Not so expensive micro markets with products that spell luxury like no other. The options ranging between 30,000 to 9,000 rupees, which is nowhere there in other part of the country. If you look at any city which is much more established, within the center of the city, you basically, you know, within 5-10 kilometers radius, you don't find an option at 9,000 rupees, a luxury product coming out. So, for example, you have Koramangla, which is having much many options today in the range of 9-12,000 rupees per square feet, which doesn't happen in any other part of the country. It's a mix of everything good that's got Bangalore on the highway to high-end luxury, big brands, even better real estate and a price spectrum that's as eclectic as it gets. But there's no denying that the real hero of this success story is the Bangalore buyer. Ever ready to spend and always up for the best of luxury that this city has to offer. Reporting from the Chennai Bangalore Highway, this is Jude Sanat for NDTV. All right, the information technology capital of India, Bangalore, now also enjoys the label of being India's top-ranking luxury market. At a time when the luxury segment in real estate has been in the slump across other regions in India, how is the case different with Bangalore? Let's discuss this with our guests, Guru Prasad, the Managing Director, Chaitanya Projects, joining us from Bangalore. And we also have Joe, Joe Verghese, Managing Director, Colliers International, joining us from Mumbai. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Uh, Joe, let me begin with you. Bangalore, cosmopolitan city, it has the highest number of software professionals concentrated in one city anywhere in the world. Um, so the IT uh, industry is definitely driving the various micro markets here. But luxury housing is a whole different class, a whole different segment. How is this segment so upbeat in Bangalore compared to all other markets in India? I think when you look at Bangalore, you'll have to take into account couple of things uh, that are happening in Bangalore. Compared to a lot of other markets, uh, Bangalore has been one market where uh, commercial um, absorption has actually been quite high. Uh, it's the second market after NCR in the last one year. Um, that has led to a lot of job creation. Uh, IT has been doing well. So, and that has led to a lot of people coming back from uh, overseas locations. Uh, as well as a significantly big, big expat community. Um, so 
all these conditions give a good impetus to uh, people to invest in uh, luxury segment, rent it out to expats, uh, as well as uh, homes for uh, people who are coming back, IT professionals who are coming back from overseas having spent between five to ten years overseas and settling back in Bangalore or working uh, from Bangalore going forward. Uh, the third category of people are people who um, are living abroad, NRIs, um, and are looking for a quality of life that Bangalore off offers, which is, uh, uh, which is great climate as well as a cosmopolitan environment. Um, all this put together give Bangalore a, a, a very good um, position to be in in terms of uh, luxury seg segment. Uh, Mr. Prasad, what's your assessment of this? Uh, what kind of response are you seeing from home seekers? Are home seekers finding value in luxury projects uh, in today's time? Actually, I would like to add on to what uh, really Joe was saying uh, uh, in terms of uh, the market and such things. Uh, as far as the IT is concerned, uh, it would be interesting for you to note that uh, you have various categories from, uh, you know, if you want to classify luxury as 3 crores, 5 to 6 crores and you know, maybe 8 to 10 crores and above, above that, you have most of the IT, uh, what do you say, clients coming in from at the 3 crores plus. But if you go into the 10 crore range, you would only see that uh, you have entrepreneurs. We have statistics from whatever uh, projects we have made and we've seen that, uh, you know, the three crores uh, attract 60 percent of uh, IT, whereas uh, uh, the, the 10 crore uh, bracket uh, homes attract just uh, 10 percent of uh, the IT industry. So most of the 10 crore bracket is coming in from the, from the entrepreneurs and such things. It's also interesting and uh, surprising to note that uh, finance and banking uh, across all these three sections that I mentioned. Uh, really contribute to 15 to 20 percent of uh, customers so you can see that actually there is a, a pretty nice spread there's almost five to eight percent of uh, you know professional services like doctors lawyers and uh, uh, architects also opting to uh, look at luxury homes so this is the type of uh, and also you can you can see the demographics in terms of the age uh, you know early 40s are the three cross bracket and uh, late 40s or the early 50s are the 10 crore uh, sort of uh, uh, the market really. So it's a, it's a nice interesting market and uh, you must note that also what really defines luxury. I think you know, that's where uh, really the difference is, uh, I mean that, that's where the difference Bangalore is really bringing in. One is of course the quality that uh, you know all the developers over here offer. The second aspect is I think uh, you know our understanding of life sciences and uh, really producing products which are uh, are suited to make it really luxurious. You know. Luxury need not uh, just mean uh, uh, a large element of uh, cost of land and uh, not so much value add into the whole thing. So what type of value we add really into developing the property really is what makes mm -hmm. it uh, luxury. Right. Uh, Joe, lots of options available in Bangalore when it comes to luxury real estate. So the concept of affordable luxury has also become quite hit in Bangalore. There's some kind of luxury available for every budget. Yeah, um, yes. Bangalore is one market which uh, compared to the other markets, if you look at uh, other metros like Mumbai, NCR, um, the price, uh, price has not increased over the last 9-10 years at the rate it has in other markets. Um, that has given um, Bangalore a position where um, clients feel that they can get uh, a lot more for, for what they're putting down in terms of value. Um, so you have, uh, Bangalore will be one market where luxury actually start, starts from two crores onwards, depending on the location and, and depending on the amenities provided. Um, and it can go all the way up to 30, 40 crores, uh, depending on whether it's in the CBD or close to the CBD. Um, so it, it kind of has a, a product for all, all, of, all, all segments. Um, and at, at even two to three crores, you can actually get a villa close to the, close to the city uh, with amenities like uh, a nice clubhouse uh, and, a, and a lawn outside. So there'll be very few metros uh, which uh, give you that kind of facility, uh, maybe 20 kilometers from the from the center of the city. 
Uh, Mr. Prasad, if you could uh, point out for us, which are these hot spots of luxury housing in Bangalore? Are these new suburban areas or are these existing established locations? Which are the locations we should look out for? I think predominantly it's been, uh, you know, you can, you can classify it as two sections. One is the luxury homes of the CBD and then the luxury homes in the, in the, in the suburbs. And uh, predominantly, as far as the suburbs are concerned, it has been Whitefield, uh, which has really dominated the entire uh, luxury home market. And largely, it has been because of uh, excellent gated communities that have really, you know, have got developed uh, in and around Whitefield. Now we hear a bit of uh, the north of Bangalore also trying to pitch in to do some uh, good uh, sort of luxury developments, but uh, largely dominated uh, by Whitefield. I know that there is a potential in the south of Bangalore, which is also something that you know uh, we should be looking at, but uh, largely dominated, as I said, by Whitefield. Most of the developments are in Whitefield. All right, Bangalore, the IT hub, always regarded as a stable real estate market, now also doing well in the luxury space. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on the show today.